the title of my research is International Conferences of uh, The title of my research is International Conferences of Cancer Diagnosis Disclosure and Palliative Treatment from a Biotechnical Perspective. Uh, this is the introduction. Uh, cancer is a leading cause of uh, cause of morbidity and mortality. It's an important issue, uh, and some uh, biological issues uh, arise due to uh, during the cancer treatment and uh, also diagnosis, disclosure, and palliative treatment. Here, uh, yes, cancer is a group of disease uh, characterized by the uncontrolled growth and spread of abnormal cells. If the spread is not controlled, it can result in death. According to American Cancer Society 2007, 70, cancer is a leading a leading cause of death over human history. According to WHO, is the second major cause of death currently. When the totals for the different types of death are added, according to WHO 2017. And uh, disclosure of cancer is an important issue. Diagnosis disclosure is a complex issue in communication with cancer patients. It involves the philosophical questions of what is true. Approaching patients with malignant neoplasm is not an easy task in, in clinical practice because it involves transmitting the medical information about the diagnosis, prognosis, risk, and benefits of treatment. In addition to the possibility of disease progression, uh, in such circumstances, the process of delivering bad news uh, to patients is challenging, difficult, and sole responsibility uh, of the physician. Here are some modifying factors for cancer disclosures, uh, like family favors disclosures, cancer is physically noticeable, Good prognosis are uh, needed for treatment compliance, needed for consent to treatment, patient emotionally strong, patient has a strong wish to know, patient has compelling need to know, patient is adult of younger age, no debt policy against telling. But all, um, although there is uh, some factors uh, that we are about to uh, dis disclose, but uh, there, there are some ethical issues. Therefore, uh, and another uh, uh, another uh, issue of uh, cancer treatment, is palliative treatment for the dying patients or uh, severely ill patients. Palliative care is care given to improve the quality of life of patients who have a serious or life-threatening disease such as cancer. The goal of palliative care is to prevent or treat as early as possible the symptoms and side effects of the disease and its treatment. In addition to the related psychological, social, and spiritual problems, the goal is not to cure. Palliative care is also called comfort care, supportive care, symptom management. A doctor patient communication is an important issue and uh, issue in uh, cancer uh, treatment, uh, overall, the cancer care. Uh, communication may be defined uh, in very several ways according to the context. In the present study, communication is understood as any situation of the interrelationship between people who interact with each other. And uh, it's an important fact for disclosing uh, cancer uh, to the patients. Uh, first of all, uh, there is a, we need a strong uh, relationship between doctor and patients. Understand the patient's condition, uh, both physical and mental conditions. Justification of my study is given the number of people suffering from inappropriate treatment of cancer worldwide, the study is overdue. There is a number of ethical cautions arising dealing with cancer patients due to fatality of this disease. A combination of ethical guidelines, improved communication, and greater empathy may solve these dilemmas. A deeper understanding of current practice of diagnosis disclosure and palliative treatment of different countries of the world could help in developing these combined guidelines. Also, comparison between developed, developing and underdeveloped countries could help focus on factors that influence the level of implementation of ethical practice. Uh, here is my research question. 
because of the above mentioned concerns about disclosure and palliative treatment of persons living with cancer and uh, the gaps in the literature regarding Addis in Bangladesh and other countries, it is timely to undertake this research. The research question in includes what are the existing practices of diagnosis disclosure and palliative treatment? What is the extent of implementation of ethical guidelines and ethical principles in cancer diagnosis disclosure and providing palliative care to the patients? When it is ethical to disclose serious illness to cancer patients and when it is not? What are the patient's expectations? What proposals could be effective uh, for the implementation of ethical practice in the cancer care based on the findings of the study? Obviously, chapter two, some literature reviews uh, and also some uh, topics and some uh, values I need to know, uh, we need to know. And then, first of all, the values and uh, bioethics. Bio, first of all, we need to know what is bioethics. Bioethics is the study of ethical issues emerging from advances in biology and medicine. It is also moral discernment as it relates to medical policy and practice. Bioethicists are concerned with the ethical questions that arise in the relationship among life science, biotechnology, medicine, politics, law, and philosophy. It includes the study of values. Bioethical issues in cancer care, uh, there, there are some uh, ethical issues uh, arise during uh, dealing with the cancer patients. These are really of pain and suffering, autonomy and consent, complexity of healthcare dream, overdiagnosis, uh, the issue of truth of telling. Uh, since ancient times, uh, philosophers and religious thinkers have debated issues concerning uh, deception and truth-telling. They have generally regarded truth as preferable, if not indispensable, to a uh, human relationship and deception as something that at the very least needs justification. Truth-telling is a complicated business also. Patients write. Every patient has a right to know about their physical condition and also uh, the, the, uh, know about their disease. So uh, we need to focus on the rights of the patients. Uh, to telling from a physician's perspective, here are some uh, studies uh, of, uh, about the perspectives of uh, the physician. Who, uh, some of them uh, want to uh, disclose the truth to the patients. Some of them uh, prefer to disclose it to uh, fast uh, with family. Uh, here are some uh, studies. To uh, telling from patients' perspectives. Effects of truth uh, disclosure on cancer patients. Uh, before disclosing uh, the truth, uh, first of all, we need to focus on the con patient's condition. So uh, there is some ethical issues arise. Okay, yes. Not disclosing the truth uh, to patients. Uh, we need uh, guidelines. <coughs> guidelines will uh, uh, we we will disclose the uh, truth to the patients. Is it good for uh, him or her or bad? <coughs> advantages of for healthcare professionals to uh, disclose. Also, there is some advantage uh, for uh, physicians uh, who want to disclose the truth. Uh, but uh, we need to focus also on this point. Here are some ethical guidelines for cancer disclosure. Um, a non-disclosure, do no harm, act for the patient's good, the principle of beneficence, reduce psychological burden of fear or death, provide hope. Here are some bioethical issues of palliative uh, care, some studies. 
influence of uh, family in palliative care, uh, there is a uh, effect of uh, family members' uh, choice in uh, palliative care. Uh, so uh, I am planning to uh, interview also the family members as well as the uh, physicians and the patients. Uh, ethical guidelines for palliative treatment. Uh, previous studies uh, provided some guidelines and I have added this. Uh, physicians have the responsibility to inform the patients or surrogate of the diagnosis and prognosis to determine which treatment should be recommended <coughs> or offered based on available evidence and the patient's clinical condition to inform the patient or surrogate of the potential benefit and burdens of uh, different courses of treatment. Here are some uh, studies on healthcare professionals' attitude towards diagnosis disclosure. Some studies of uh, Europe, Italy, Spain, Greece. Uh, some studies on healthcare professionals' attitude towards uh, palliative care. Some studies from different countries of the world. Here's the methodology section. Uh, the study objectives. Uh, my general objective is to access the existing ethical practice in diagnosis disorder and palliative care of cancer in Bangladesh with selected international comparisons. Specific objectives. To investigate the extent to which ethics is implemented in cancer care to explore patients' expectations regarding cancer care, to find out patients' understanding of treatment plan, to obtain oncologists' opinions about ethical practice, find out the role of communication in ethical practice, to assess the relation between socio-demographic factors and ethical practice. It's a conceptual framework. Uh, study design. This is a descriptive cross-sectional study based on interviews with patients and family, patients, family members, and the physicians of, uh, treated in different uh, selected hospitals in selected countries. Currently, this is a plan to be in Bangladesh, USA, Canada, Japan, and Thailand. There will also be interviews with medical professionals practicing there. This uh, study will utilize the descriptive survey method with the use of both open and closed ended questionnaire as the main instrument of data collection. Target population and sample population. The sample population will consist of the following persons treated at hospitals that have approved the studies. Study period uh, late 2017 to uh, 2018, uh, about a year. Estimated sample size for interviews. For the time being, um, I have estimated the sample size would be uh, the cancer patients are 300, medical staffs are 300, family members 50, and selected hospitals uh, will be 5 to 10 from different countries of the world. Inclusion criteria All the cancer patients aging from 15 years of age, patients of any gender, healthcare professionals associated with cancer care. Family members of uh, someone treated for cancer. Exclusion criteria for persons who do not consent to participate. Sampling technique. Purposive sampling uh, technique will be applied. Data collection tools, a structured and semi structured questionnaire or interview containing false and open ended questions according to objectives and variables of the study will be used for collection of data. Data management and analysis plan. The collected data will be cleaned, separated, and then will be entered into the computer program as PSS will be used for data analysis. The principal investigator will be responsible for data entry. Data will be tested for association among some variables, where the data will be analyzed to test statistical school significance using chi squared tests out association between study variables on the basis of study findings. Quality control and quality assurance. As the researcher, I will collect all the data and I will analyze them. Quality will be assured by the following steps. Question three days, careful selection of interviews, the explaining of the data, rechecking of the data collected, editing the data. 
ethical considerations. All necessary administrative approvals will be obtained from the responsible authorities before uh, the study takes place. Verbal consent will be taken from participants of the study. The respondents will be assured of the confidentiality. Expected outcome. The study aims at identifying the existing provision of ethical practice in cancer diagnosis, disclosure, and palliative care. Information of ethical practice in five different de developed and developing countries can help the ethical policy makers to undertake strategic planning to ensure ethical practice in cancer care in the future. Limitations. Although it's an international study, but uh, it has some limitations, the study will only focus on a limited number of uh, hospitals in selected countries, including Bangladesh. I'm currently considering how to also survey in USA, Canada, Japan, and Thailand. Here's how some references. This is the consent form. And the most important thing is questionnaire. Uh, this is a questionnaire for the pa cancer patients. This is the questions I'm going to ask them for interview. This is the questionnaire for uh, family members of uh, cancer patients. And this is the questionnaire for doctors most important, Ad, uh, some attitude related questions and uh, some practice related questions. Oh, this is all. Uh, thank you. And I appreciate your suggestions regarding my proposal. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that's right. Thank you. Um, I'd just like uh, to um, well open the floor for any questions, uh, suggestions. Shahnas, please start. Uh, thank you, Nusra. Uh, it's a wonderful uh, presentation, I must admit, because you have taken not only uh, like uh, the we are always uh, interested in the curative nowadays. Like I'm also doing in the palliative center, like I'm doing the PhD for the end of life care now, I see that you are also interested in doing the dental disclosure of cancer patient in and the palliative treatment, how it's going on. So, and it's also, I think, going to be very ex extensive yes, because uh, you are not only doing the study in Bangladesh, but also I think uh, most probably the Thailand, Japan, and USA. But uh, I got some observation, like I just want to know myself. Like uh, from Bangladesh, when you are going to take the uh, data collection, you are going to do this data collection, that means you will need to have some uh, ethical, ethical uh, permission. Ethical. That I can understand you can take from anywhere. But when you are going to take the data from the USA, Thailand and Japan, how you are going to proceed on those collecting the ethical considerations? Uh, so that is my observation yeah. one. And uh, the other thing I think is okay, but and the uh, uh, the research question. Could you please go to back to the research question page, please? in chapter one, is it? Yes, sir. Go up. Okay, you, you went to the chapter two. Chapter two. Yes, we did. Mm. Yes, so these are the so, uh, existing practices, uh, okay, the extent and implementation of ethical guidelines. Uh, 
like uh, some of those uh, research questions are going to be focused on three kinds of respondents, isn't it? Yes. That is, uh, one is the doctor, one is the cancer patient cancer himself patients. or herself, and the another one is the family. Family. Okay. So, uh, the extent of implementation ethical guidelines you are going to ask, all the research questions is going to be based on three kinds of respondents? Yeah. All so do you expect that the families or the cancer patient, they will understand anything about the ethical guidelines or ethical uh, principles? No, no, uh, just ethical guidelines uh, for only doctors and the family, family members, uh, how they, uh, they have been treated from, by the doctors. Uh, therefore, I'm uh, I'm uh, I'm going to interview both cancer patients and family members. Family members, especially the family members of the palliative uh, care, uh, the patients who are in uh, palliative uh, care, unconscious patients. Uh, it should be clarified. So I think the research question, if you could just uh, clarify, like uh, which questions to be for whom, that will be a better. Yes. I mean for betterment for seeing, you know, yeah, yeah. like uh, otherwise, you know, it's haphazard. I mean, yeah. For whom the question is placed, it's it's kind of like... Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> you can clear that. And mm -hmm. please go to the, the objectives. Yes. My observation, please try to un uh, make me understand or everybody, like how yes. are you going to get this ethical consideration from those countries? If Bangladesh is okay, you can take BMRC or at your university if they have. But how about the Japan, the Thailand and the US? Yes. Uh, how you are approaching for that? Uh, and are you going to those countries to yes. collect data yes, yourself? I'm yes. Um, thank you. After uh, getting the IRP approval, uh, I will approach, I uh, will request the so hospitals. You, you see, have you uh, considered, like in USA, you just said USA. I mean, USA has lots of states. We in which states, from whom, because in those ethical consideration, now you have to put all those things in the proposal, isn't it? Yes, yes. As far as I feel, you know, that's my observation. Derry will say, I mean, maybe he, he can correct that. Yeah. My observation is that in the ethical consideration, you have to straight away say from which state and which uh, which uh, ethical review committee, those things should be very much specifically yeah, clear. So that, clarified. isn't it? Yeah. So. Well, well, from the USA, uh, a federally recognized IRB, as such as IUSN, we're recognized with both the Food and Drug Administration and the Office of Human Research Subject Protection. So the approval from a federally recognized IRB is applicable across any United States and United States territories around the world. Uh, now, if the in interviews are done with the uh, a particular institution, the hospital, for example, may want to have additional hospital ethics committee approval. But if it's done without an insider context of a general public or outside institution, then it's sufficient as long as it's federally recognized IRB, it's fine. So uh, you don't need additional in different states. You, in federal, it's a federal regulation, not a state so regulation. I hope that Daryl can manage, will help you for that USA. But what about Japan and Thailand? Because you are a student from here and the US, and but for approaching in a country, you can just give a proposal there to whom you are going to give those. Uh, like, it's a question for me. In Thailand, suppose from here, you will just go fly there and just submit from how, how it's going to happen. Like, I want to clear myself. Because maybe in future, I might do some, yeah. some kind of so international yeah. comparison about the end of life care. Maybe yes. I, I'm really getting interested, you know. So just to clear out for me, it's not a question. This how you are going to approach so that I can approach myself. Mm -hmm. so maybe I will uh, yeah, answer the, um, this one because the, each hospital, if it's done in the context of a hospital as is Ms. Wright's proposal, then the hospital ethics committee is sufficient to give approval. Okay. Okay? So the hospital will be the one. If it's uh, across a nation, then 
probably will use a. It depends case by case. Uh, our office in Thailand is in Chulalongkorn University, and we may use Chulalongkorn University uh, as the ethics committee. But if it's in a particular hospital, we'd prefer to use a hospital. We also work in Thailand with the Department of Health, like uh, you're doing here. So the Department of Health, uh, which I collaborate with in Thailand, we may do a department-wide um, collaboration. In fact, we may be also setting up an office in Department of Health in, uh, in Thailand. In, uh, so that's uh, the last few weeks I was meeting with many colleagues here. So this is a, uh, and now I'm one of the editors of the journal and other things. So we're trying to develop with the Thai government as well. In the Japanese case, it's also hospital, every hospital has an ethics committee. So this is probably available in those contexts um, and otherwise at its universities. The, the difficult thing for IRB approval is if it's in the general public, then what's an appropriate uh, IRB to represent? In Bangladesh you have a BMRC, as for example, or other forums, but in some countries there may not be a general ethics committee which may be uh, applicable. But the nationally recognized university ethics committees can give approval for projects across the country in some countries. And in the US, that's the case. But some institutions require additional approval, uh, but some do not. And in some tribal nations, if it's done in the tribal nation, they may require additional ethical approval because of the, if it's involving indigenous people. Thank you. That's, that's great. Like, because there really is going to be everywhere. So you are getting all kinds of summary. That's very good. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Just tell me, please. Thank you, Dr. Nusrat, for your wonderful uh, you know, presentation, subject to proposal. Uh, I appreciate for your hard work. I have some opinion and just uh, small questions about it. That you have showed uh, nine modifying factors of cancer disclosure, and uh, did you have any reference of those uh, modifying factors? Like, uh, are there any more modifying factors? Like okay. 9, 11, uh, or 12? After uh, reviewing some literatures, I just found uh, this nine. Uh, nine, uh, um, and from, uh, the, from just I'm one paper? Or? Uh, from uh, some papers, and I added the references uh, to the last. And uh, uh, therefore, I'm, I'm uh, trying to uh, think the uh, current condition, uh, current practice, uh, to uh, develop some guidelines. Oh, that's uh, very uh, And also for the comparison, international yeah, comparison. Thank you. Uh, you, have, you have mentioned about uh, de underdeveloped, developing and developed countries. You want to, uh, your research course is uh, applicable for developed, underdeveloped and developing countries. Um, like this, uh, as I have seen. Yes. But uh, Bangladesh, you will say... I want to compare the US, uh, US is a developed country and Bangladesh is developing. So, country, uh, so uh, what about other countries, you know, like Canada, uh, Thailand and Japan? Are they developing or uh, developed? They are developed. Mm -hmm. Developed, so... Uh, yeah, but uh, they are not in the same country. Isn't it a uh, kind of unequal distribution of underdeveloped, developing and developed countries? Yes, uh, and uh, currently I'm planning for these five countries and other add more. And I'm looking for the uh, underdeveloped countries. Okay, you have uh, you have uh, you have some guidance for, for non disclosure in the chapter chapters uh, two, uh, page number fourteen to sixteen, most probably. Uh, I just wanted to know about uh, for my own interest. Uh, what are the values of disclosure? Like you just uh, mentioned about the values of non disclosure. What are the values of disclosure? They were there, but you yeah. didn't just mention. Um. Uh, 14 15, most of the same thing, number. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
which we can consider for disclosing uh, directly the, the cancer patient. So thank you. Uh, in the methadone section, you mentioned about the sample size about 300, 300, 300 like this. How did you calculate the uh, sample size? Uh, it's an uh, estimated, uh, estimated, estimated sample size okay. uh, because uh, it will uh, the sample size will uh, depend on uh, the the approval of different countries uh, okay. from different hospitals. Like if you, uh, if you, uh, as you expect, uh, 300 uh, sample from US, then you also expect 300 sample from Bangladesh. Like you want the same sample size from each country, like this? Uh, no, no. It uh, can vary. Yeah. It can vary. It depends on how, how much cancer patients are oh, Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. I have another question. Yes, Shahanas, okay. Yeah. Uh, listening to your like convoy and your discussion, uh, ethical uh, um, review committee will not fix your sample size. You will be fixing your sample size beforehand. Then if they have some query, they will <coughs> like, they will say after that. But uh, you cannot say like 300, if it is purposely selected, that, that technical te uh, sampling technique is different. Yes. But you have to estimate the sample size beforehand. Ethical review has not, nothing to do with calculating your sample size. Yes. So you need to calculate yourselves uh, where, in which format you want to do. There are several kinds of formulas. Like that, Tahirapa can say more because she's not did, did I say correctly, isn't it? Yeah, the yeah. ethical yeah. review committee has nothing to do with calculating the sample size. You need to calculate the sample size according to formula. Then maybe you can say due to your limitation or sample size calculation estimated is this physical sample size. This is, you put it in the proposal. And maybe they need the ethical review committee has some query then okay. But they are not going to fix your sample size. As far as I understand. Okay, thank you. Um, Sukran, you have some comments. Could you uh, introduce yourself and speak, please? Sukran, can you hear me? Sukran, I can't hear you. She congratulates you for good research, but I, she's, I don't know, her mic is not working or something. Nilto or is anybody else, Samara, would you like have any comments? Andrew or Sama? They're writing. Any other comments? Anyone? Suggestions? Okay, so I think. Tahiri, yeah, please. We do have come very late. Um, sorry for that, but other commitments we met. The rest of the, of the sisters are coming also. Um, the, I've just. The, heard what you said and I heard about the countries and uh, it's just a recommendation from my side that a country like Sri Lanka with 30 years of civil war yet has managed to have material health and other indicators equal to many European countries. So I was thinking that since they are so developed in their concepts and principles Perhaps you might like to think of taking a strong person. I'm also planning uh, because I'm in visiting Sri Lanka uh, to have some very good friends. This is one of the best countries in South Asia to really achieve everything on their own without and with such a huge civil war continuously for 30 years. So my hats off to them also. Thank you so much, ma'am, for this thing. Sukran, do you have any comments now? Uh, thank you, Delon. Uh, you go ahead. Sukran, your mic's off again.
Okay. So I think uh, maybe the difficult connection. One of the questions I think is uh, a few questions. One is the number of countries we need to do for international comparison. Because it's, uh, it's nice to have many different countries to do many, uh, many different samples. But uh, practically this is a PhD, not a lifetime work. Okay? So uh, we do have to limit. And the number, in a sense, it also relates to the sample size and selection question. That do we want to have five countries, 300 samples? These are interviews, that's why the number can be less than the surveys. If it's an interview and qualitative data, it's less. But uh, that's one of the questions. So you may not need to have five or six countries, even though Sri Lanka might be great. And it's a tentative list. You might find later that it is good to, to make this mixture of developing and developed countries, as Tom Wise suggested, or as Tahiru mentioned, certain countries who may have a good system which could be more comparable to the Bangladesh situation in terms of some cultural aspects uh, while having interesting comparisons because so for the PhD you can uh, partly it depends on the opportunity and in some hospitals will be willing to cooperate and some countries you may not find a suitable hospital so that's okay yeah and it, we're hoping that it's not going to take 10 years to do the PhD. Okay? <laughs> That's why you have to limit sometimes the number of countries. So it's an ambitious proposal. Sukran, you have a, I think you're online now. Go ahead. Sukran? Okay, I think it's maybe tricky for her. Uh, Ms. Wright, do you have any other comments or? Reflections? No, uh, I appreciate uh, everyone's suggestion. That's it. Okay, thank you very much. And okay, well done. Thank you for the defense.